No food and no drink from sunrise till sunset for one month. Do you think you could do it? This month is a very special month in the Islamic calendar. It's Ramadan. And this year I've decided to observe Ramadan alongside my Muslim friends, even though I myself am not Muslim. In a minute, I'll explain why. But first, here's what it involves. Ramadan is the holy month in Islam. The best known thing about Ramadan is that it's a month of fasting, when Muslims all around the world abstain from drinking and eating. But there's a lot more to it than food. It's also a month of contemplation, connection, prayer, self-reflection, becoming closer to God and giving to charity. In fact, the feeling of hunger that you experience while fasting is meant to remind you that not everybody around the world can afford to eat several meals a day. This is the third Ramadan I'm spending in a Muslim-majority country and this time I decided to join in. And I want to do it for three reasons. Number one, with so many of my friends around the world fasting this month, I want to put myself in their shoes and understand this period of time from their perspective. I want to connect to them on a deeper level and share this experience together. For the first time, I might actually be able to understand what it's like for them to go through the challenges and rewards of Ramadan. Number two, fasting is generally accepted to be quite good for your health. With trends like intermittent fasting on the rise all around the world, it seems like fasting is actually pretty good for the health of your gut. And number three, the power of the mind. When you're hungry, it's just so easy to go up to the cupboard or fridge and pick up a snack and eat it mindlessly. Well, I want to give my mind a bit of a workout and control that urge to eat in a safe and controlled environment. And here's the thing, fasting is not just a strictly religious activity. Anyone can try it, whether you want to connect on a deeper level to your neighbors and friends or train your mind or cleanse your gut. It's something that anyone can try. Just as long as you take it easy, listen to your body and don't overdo it, why not? Today is the fourth day of my fast and here's what it's been like so far. The iftar dinner is the traditional way to break the fast during Ramadan and the way that we do it here is with a cup of gawa, which is coffee, coffee yeah. <laughs> and dates, tamal. It's tamal. tamal. Yeah. And bread. 3.30 a.m. and I've just woken up for suhoor or seri, which is the last meal that you have in the day. Between now and sunset, you don't eat or drink anything else. In this part of the world, even children learn to fast slowly and gradually, but since this is my first time attempting to fast ever in my life, I'm going to take it a little bit more slowly. Currently, because of the coronavirus pandemic, I'm stuck on a pretty dry and arid island in the Middle East. So this is not my natural environment and I get headaches quite often. So I'm not going to push it. I will still continue to drink water throughout the day, but I will not eat or drink anything else. With Ramadan being a time for self-reflection and prayer, I'm also taking this opportunity to meditate more. I'm not religious, but I love being present and being mindful and meditation can help with that. It's not very easy to get started with meditation and I feel like I'm really not very good at it, but these are baby steps. The important thing is to learn, trust the process and not give up. I'm not expecting to come out of Ramadan as a transformed person, but I think any opportunity to put yourself in another person's shoes and practice empathy is an opportunity for learning. And that's always a good thing. So whether you decide to join in just for a couple of days or observe the entire month of Ramadan, I'd like to wish you Ramadan Kareem.